Okay, so here we are inside of Maya 2014. I'm just gonna do a generic overview of the UI layout just so you guys can kind of get your feet wet and understanding how the program's kind of laid out. Up in the top here, we still have file menu just like in 3ds Max. This is how we can save our scene, load our scenes, import, export, all those great things. Now, off of that, we have all these different drop-down menus along the top. Now, the biggest difference between 3ds Max and Maya is, is this drop-down menu right here. Right now it's currently set to polygons. If I click on that, I can change this to different things. What these refer to is, you'll see this top bar up here, all these menus. If I click on animation, it's gonna change. So now, I have new menu options that just pertain to animation tools, okay? And if I switch back to polygons, I have menus that just pertain to polygon modeling and editing, okay? So this is one of the most important things to remember. Put a little star next to this. Whenever you're working, uh, especially when you're modeling, you wanna be in the polygons tab. Sometimes this will get switched out, you'll accidentally hit a shortcut key, and it'll be in some other weird setting like rendering or something. Just switch it back to polygons. Okay, next, right next to it, we have just some saving options, some selection options. We have snapping, rendering, just some generic tabs that you're not gonna use too often, but a lot of these will have shortcuts keys for we won't need to use the actual icon. Now, this area right here with all of these tabs, general, curves, polygons, deformers, this whole area with these icons that appears too, this is called the shelf inside of Maya. And all these are, are just shortcuts to tools that already exist up inside the menus here. It's just the faster way to get to something. Instead of me, every time I wanted to extrude, clicking edit mesh, clicking extrude, I can go to the polygons tab and right here, there's an extrude button already created. We'll cover creating shortcuts in another video. But just remember, the shelf here, this thing, just has different subsets for shortcuts. And we can actually even create a custom one where we can generate our own custom shortcuts to, to just be set up to your own preferences. The next thing we want to cover is the viewport right here. Just like 3ds Max, nothing too much different, still normal grid, viewports. Just like 3ds Max, we have options to change some of the settings inside of the viewport we're looking at currently. So we're changing it to wireframe only, shaded, wireframe with shading, textured, some of the ways that we can toggle the quality of the rendering, isolation modes, and other things, lighting and whatnot inside this viewport. Down along the side here, we have our selection tools, just like 3ds Max. Then we have our move, rotate, and scale tools. In 3ds Max, these are located at the top. All they've just been is been pushed to the side. That's all you need to know. And down here, we just have a couple different buttons to change our viewport layout quickly. Uh, there's another option for that that we'll cover in the viewport management video. At the bottom, we have the timeline, just like 3ds Max. And along the side here, by default, if you don't have this, we'll cover that. We have the channel box, and then we have this display render animation. Display render animation, this is just kind of a layer system to manage some stuff. I'll show you guys another option that's a little bit easier and um, at a deeper route route, I should say, inside of uh, Maya. So we won't use this area too much. But the channel box, the channel box is actually probably the closest thing to a modifier panel that we're gonna get inside of Maya. The channel box will have attributes whenever we edit a mesh, we'll be able to check that in here. Now there's a couple extra little buttons up here that I wanna talk about. There's four buttons up here. The first one's activated, this is a channel box. I can actually turn it off, toggle it. It's the farthest one over here. Now the other one is this one called the tool settings. And when I click on that, this menu is only pertaining to basically these six options, okay? So if I click on the, the move tool and I wanted to change the moving tool to work on only a local axis or a local normal, I can do all that from this menu. It lets me adjust how the move tool works inside of Maya. And anytime I don't want this menu to be here, I can just close it, bring it back with the button up here. The other option we have up here is the attributes editor. The attribute editor works very similar to the channel box, and we'll talk about it later in more success. But once we have some ob objects selected, it gets us to some more low level information about what the object is and how it's created. And the last button up here is newer to Maya. So if you have an older version, don't worry about this. We're not gonna really use this. This is Maya's kind of approach to trying to give you some information kind of like 3ds Max with a kind of a fake modifier panel. I don't like to use this too often. It has a couple things that are nice about it, but I'll explain it later in another video why I really don't like to use this area too much. But we can turn that off for now and be back at our default. 
So this is the generic UI layout of Maya. So it's not that much different than 3ds Max. We have a couple different things, but that should do it for this video.